Okay, so we get to start our C++ stuff. And we'll open up Visual Studio here. And I have a little bit older version, so that's one thing I originally said to have you guys zip your whole project file together, but I'm wondering if my 2012 will be able to, is backward compatible. So if you zip together your whole project, I probably won't be able to read it. So we may have to adjust the way I wrote in the syllabus how to submit. I mean, you may just have to submit your source files and I'll have to create a project for them. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Or that. Yeah. Uh, so, to start here, um, you'll want to create a new project. And you'll want it to be Visual C++, and you want it to be a console application. Here's I think you well the the console application will allow it to open up in a in a window so that you can see the results rather than having to run it from a command line. Okay. So you'll want the console application. So you need to choose what the name you want for it. And then you need to choose a place for it. I'm going to put it in here. Okay. You do want it to create a directory. That's the default. Oh, I missed something. I wanted to make it an empty project. It's not going to give me that option. been a while. Boy, it's taking a while. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. Because <clears throat> it ends up with all this makes fancy main and standard FX and all this mess. Uh, it would be easier to do. Where did I... Usually, it lets me do. Oh, maybe I do want it. Yeah. Well, I still want it to be a console application that's blank. There we go. There we go. So you were right. I do want a Win32 console application. So that is what you want. Let me go. Let me cancel that and do that again. You want a Win32 console application, and then it'll give you another screen that you go to next. And if you choose it to be an empty project, it will be cleaner. So here now you'll see you've got your um, you've got your empty project, and you'll want to add a source file to your project. Add new item. If you want it to be a C++ file, you can give it whatever name you want. Okay, I just took the default as, C, as uh, source.cpp. Okay, and um, then in here you're going to have a int main. Okay, uh, and it has to be an int, although Interestingly enough, it's the only function in C++ that has a return argument but does not re require that you return something. So I should be able to run this, and it should do, let's see, if I do start without debugging, control F5. So a lot of times I end up doing hitting control F5, um, but that will just uh, compile it and run it. I'm pretty sure this should run fine. It does. Nothing happens. And this is what I'm talking about, Mike, where if you do a console application, this screen will pop up with the results of whatever you've done in it. 
And if you don't choose a console application, it won't. Yeah. Right. Um, now, you can, and it's generally considered cleaner programming technique to return something because, you know, every other function other than main, if it has a return argument, you must return something or it won't compile. Okay, so, you know, when I hit control F5 and compile and run this, it does the same thing, but it's generally considered a little bit better programming style to actually return something even though it's never really used. Okay, um, you're always essentially going, you know, every program is essentially always going to use IO stream. Okay, so you're going to want to include IO stream. And you're going to want to include name, using namespace standard. Okay, and basically, you know, the namespace is, is there's, C++ is so flexible that you can, if you want, rename and, and create new functions for everything. The things like you're used to, like C in and C out and all those functions. You can completely redo them and write them all yourself to do something special. Okay, um, And so C++ allows there to be different, what they are called namespaces, which are basically different versions of the commands. And we're always interested in using the standard versions of all these commands, and that's why we use using namespace standard. Okay. And when we do that, we can then do something like see out hello world. And then what did I get wrong? Oh, right, yeah. Thank you, Tim. There we go. Well, there we go. Now, you know, you contrast this with MATLAB. You create a, a script and you write disp parenthesis, single quote, hello world, single quote, parenthesis, run, and you get the same thing. So, you know, there's more overhead in terms of creating the project, doing all this stuff, writing the syntax for main, you know, that's what MATLAB gains you is you don't have to worry about a lot of these extra little doohickeys and, you know, getting all that stuff right. But as you can see, you've already seen MATLAB can be kind of slow, okay? And, you know, it's not as universal as C++ is, okay? So technically what's interesting, if you look at the class, the CSE 1311 that you've taken, they call that C++ for engineers, but really that class is almost 100% C, really, okay? Um, this command C out, the C out and C in, those things are C++, and if you were to write in C, you can't use C in and C out. But really, the C in and the C out and how you've written to files, doing file, writing files and C in, C out, those are really the only things of C++ that you've learned in CSE 1311. For all intents and purposes, you've only learned C, okay? And you've learned what's called procedural programming, where you are writing functions and subroutines and things like that, rather than object-oriented programming, okay? And you've seen a little bit of object stuff uh, in MATLAB, actually. Like, for example, the handle. When you return the handle of a plot, that handle has all sorts of things, all sorts of properties in there, right? It's, you know, the color and the marker size and the line width. All of those different variables are part of that handle. That one handle thing is actually an object that contains all of those different things in it, okay? So that's actually an object. And a structure, when we've done structures, where the, you know, the th something, something, dot something, and you can save, you know, Kevin dot name, Kevin dot shoe size, et cetera. You store multiple things in the same variable. That's actually an object, okay? And so that's the difference between C and C++ is it's dealing with objects. And you don't realize it, but C out, what goes on behind the scenes is dealing with objects, all right? And so what we're going to eventually be learning, not today, at, really at all, but starting next time, we'll start looking at objects and object-oriented programming, okay? So even though you've taken a class in C++, 
you don't know really anything yet about object-oriented programming, and that's what we're going to introduce to you in the rest of the rest of this course. Yes. Uh, when you're modeling, yes. Yeah. Right. Um, where it waits to continue. Um, that depends on which type of project you chose. So um, I'm not sure. You know, if you didn't choose the Win32 console empty project, if you chose something slightly different than that, you can end up where it won't where it won't uh, won't pause for you. Um, so if you choose the project type exactly the way I did, you'll get that pause. Um, I forget the command. I forget the command, but you can always add. Um, you can add a command that will. Yeah, sys. Yeah, right. Once again, remind me. System, then parenthesis, pause in there, something like that. And so then you can get it to do that. But I've seen that if if I don't create this, there's some little checkbox or something that doesn't get marked right. You know, if my, your version of, of Visual Studio is slightly different than mine, but if you choose the right way of the, the, the right way of building your project, you'll get that pause automatically. All right. So what I want to go over today is talking about arrays, okay? Because arrays are very fundamental to, you know, programming. So we've done vectors and matrices, you know, all the time, okay? Um, I imagine that in your 1311 class, you did only allocated memory statically for arrays. If I, um, I assume that's probably the way you've done it. You've not, probably not done dynamic allocation. Um, so we'll, I'll show you here the difference. We'll see. I don't know if any of you have done uh, dynamic, but essentially um, what you do is you can say, I want to have a double uh, and gosh, now I'm not even sure. I've been so long since I've done this. Let me double check that I remember the syntax right. Can I compile? Yes. Okay. Okay. And then we can do C out X zero. Remember, this is not MATLAB anymore. Indices start with zero. That will trip us up for a while going forward. Okay. That and then we'll get the values of x, okay? Which we yeah, gotta change that. Maybe I'll make it something different so we can tell that they're really different. And so I've created a double, an array of three elements, an array called x of three elements, and it's of a double data type. And I put in, I happen to give them integer values, okay? Um, but they could be decimals, you know, I could make that like 7.4 or whatever, because you know, I declared it as a double, okay? And uh, by using this uh, is a way of pre-allocating the values, okay? So let's say, you know, we wanted to make, um, we wanted to do this where we wanted to take, uh, have a list of all the squares. So for example, we have it 1, 4, 9, okay? We run that. And we get all of our score. Maybe we should, if we're going to start with zero, maybe better we do zero, one, two, or one, four, I mean. Okay? And that's easy enough if we're wanting to just, uh, you know, have a, a few of the values. But let's say we wanted to do the first 10 or the first 20 squares. Okay? That would be kind of painful to write, you know, with, uh, to type them all in. So let's go ahead and we'll do the first, shoot, we'll do first 50 squares. Okay? And rather than pre-allocating them, let's write a for loop. For int i equals zero. You know what? Let me do this. I'll define a variable for the length, and I'll call that 50. Well, you know what? Let's wait for do that. Um, and we'll do i less than 50 i plus plus. Okay? And... The trick that I like to do here is, you know, you could do less than or equal to 49, 
Okay, but I I don't know. I like to do less than 50 because 50 is the length of the array. And if I do less than 50, that'll make sure it never gets past 49 because it's zero through 49 of the 50 rather than one through 50. So those are one of those sort of tricks you you can you can work on. So then I'll say x of i is equal to i times i. Okay. And then maybe I'll go ahead and do c out. I rather than here. Okay. If I run that, I should get 50 different squares. If I scroll back up, you know, it starts at 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, etc., all the way on down. Okay. Now, um, if I want to change this to be 100 instead of 50 or 25, I need to change both this number and this number, okay? So the cleaner way is to create a value for that. Length is equal to 50. And then I'll put length here, and I will do length here. Now, when I run this, I get an error, okay? What this error says is expected a constant expression. Okay, and this is one of the drawbacks of what's so-called static array uh, definition, where the size of the array here can has to be known to the computer when you are compiling your 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 program. Okay, what the you know when you compile the program, all it knows is that you want length. You know, whatever is in the variable length to make the array that size. But when the program's compiled, length doesn't actually have a value. It's not until runtime when you actually run this line of the code that length gets the value 50. Okay? So C must know at compile time how large that array is going to be. Okay? And this is a funda fundamental difference between C++ and MATLAB. I mean, in MATLAB, it doesn't care. I mean, you can make the array have five elements and then delete one of the elements. Or have it have five elements and then add three more. You know, you're dynamically changing the size of an array. So in C++, not only can you not change the size of the array, but the, but the, the compiler must know the size of the array before you've compiled your program. Okay? So the only way to make this work is to say that that integer length is a constant and that it can never change. You know, if I make constant like this, this is going to run here. Okay, and I get my 50 and I can change this to be 25 and I'll only get 25 of them. That works great, okay? But what I can't do is after I choose what length is and then change, you know what? I don't want it to be 25 anymore. I want it to be 50, okay? I can't do that, okay, because I've declared length to be a constant, okay? You cannot assign a variable that is constant, okay? So you can't change length from whatever, you know, whatever I type in for this number there is what length can be. The program can never decide what length is, okay? So, for example, let's say you ask the user, hey, tell me how many, how, how many you want, okay? So we do something like this where I say at the length, and then I want to do a C in and say, you know, type in, wait a minute, how does that work? C in like this, do length, okay? Where I ask the user to enter the length, okay? That won't work because length has to be constant, okay? The only way we can do this is with what we call dynamic array allocation, okay? And when you do dynamic array allocation, it's quite different, okay? Well, let me leave that, actually. Yes, well, I mean, we're gonna do pointers and array allocation, yes, absolutely. So what we're gonna do is we are going to declare x not as an array of doubles, but as a pointer to a double, 
Okay, now, how much of stuff did you guys do with pointers in 1311? Nothing. You've never seen a pointer? How about you, Chase? And you never saw a pointer in your life in C++, in 1311? Well, yeah, yeah, surely you did pass by reference, and technically that uses pointers, but you may have never declared a pointer variable like this. Have you ever declared a pointer variable like this? You might have. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, that's interesting. I'm surprised that you never did. All right. So, what this does is it creates a pointer to a variable because and this is not going to translate well to the um, to the recording <clears throat> but when I have x of 50 you know when I did it the the other way when I do double x of 50 what really happens behind the scenes here okay is in the memory okay and every variable is stored. There's different places in memory where you can store variables. Okay? And anytime, if I do just, you know, double x equals 5, just a single scalar, okay, what it'll do is it'll find some available place in memory, and it'll put, you know, the value x there. So let me first start off doing something simple. Just double x equals 5. Okay? What it's going to do is it's going to find one of the cubby holes in memory, and it's going to name it x, and it's going to put the value 5 in that memory location. Okay? And then any time you write x, it'll go to the memory location for 5, and then it'll bring and it'll return it. Okay? Now, when you do double x 50 or 10 or whatever, okay, it says, okay, I now need 50 memory locations to store these 50 values. Okay, so it's going to say, okay, well, I'm going to have x1 is going to be here, x2 is going to be here, x3 is going to be the next one, etc. It's going to find 10 or 50 consecutive memory uh, of 50 memory pins to store the numbers in. Okay, and then x1 will get stored, x2 will get stored there, etc. on down. Okay, and the memory locations, okay. They now have a name because you've given a variable to it, but they also have a number. Okay? They're going to have an address, and it's going to be some weird-ass hexadecimal number. Okay? So, you know, there's going to be some weird, you know, A32, F3, or whatever. It's going to be some hexadecimal number that's telling the, lo the, the, the address of that memory location. Okay? And... The analogy that I like to think of is mailboxes and, you know, phys physical addresses. You know, I live at 251 Pickett's Tricks, okay? And on my mailbox, there's the number 251, okay? And the ma the mailman gets a letter and says, oh, this, this letter is supposed to go to this address, okay? And it takes that letter and goes and puts it inside the mailbox, okay? So the letter, the contents in my mailbox is the number that's being stored inside my mailbox, and the address is that 251, okay? Now, the mail person probably does eventually figure out that McFalls live at 251, so there's a name that gets associated with the address, but, you know, I might get, you know, I might get foreclosed on next week and get booted out of my house and the address will stay the same, but there'll be a new name associated with that address. Okay? So there's three things at play here. Okay? There's the number of the address, there's the name of the person that lives there, and there's the contents inside the mailbox. Okay? And so far, if you've never dealt with a pointer, you've never dealt with the thing of the address here. Okay, so let me go back to making this x50. Well, you know, maybe I'll do x length, and I'll make this a constant again. 
constant length equals 50, so I can spell right, and change that to length. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and run this, make sure it works right. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint here. And instead of control F5, I'm going to do start debugging, just F5. Okay, and here it pauses, and I'm going to go do a single step, and now I've gotten to this point, and I'm going to go to the watch here. And you can type in variables, like I can type in length, and value of length is 50. You know, this is kind of like looking at the workspace, the current workspace. Okay, and look, it even tells me what the type is. You know, this is very similar to the types of stuff you see in the workspace in MATLAB. Okay, and you know what, let me go ahead now, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it go all the way, hit continue. Let's see, where's continue? That's continue. No. Ah, here's continue. So now it's gone through all the for loops, and it's about to end. So all of the X values have been printed on the screen somewhere, one of these things. All the numbers have been printed on the screen, okay? And they've all been stored in each one of these memory, in each one of the mailboxes, okay? Now, if I typed X here, that's weird. It's this 0X0031F908. That's what I'm talking about, this thing here. The X means that it's hexadecimal. And you can see it's a mixture of letters, F, and there's an F in there because it counts up to 16. Don't worry about it. You'll learn about that in digital logic, okay? Um, you know, but it's a hexadecimal. It's a way, it's the address of X. So X doesn't contain the number. X does not have the number 1 or 4 or 9 or 25, okay? X is actually a pointer to a memory location. What's actually stored in X is the memory location of the first place, okay? That's the number, the address of the first one, okay? If I want to know what's in the first memory, I put X of one, that says go, oh, well, that, that's not right, the first one is two, see? I'm already forgetting, thinking MATLAB, okay? That's the first, that's what's stored in the first place of X. And this is what's stored in the second one of X. Okay? Now, you can also do, say, you know, not only what is X equal to, but what's inside of X. This is sort of like the, in, when we're doing struct cell array cells, where you can say, give me the, talk about the container, or talk about the contents of the container. Okay, X will tell you the name of the memory location, and if we want the contents, one way you can do it was with the X bracket uh, um, zero end bracket, and you can also do it. And I kind of got to remember here. No, what's it? Sorry. There we go. Okay. Another way is to say star X, and what the star says is, assuming that X is a pointer. Inside the memory location that X is pointing to. Okay, so X here is the same. And if we look at the you know the cell the cell analogy, this is the talking about the container. This is talking about the contents of the container. Okay, and the contents of the first container is the number zero. Okay, now I can also say give me the contents of the next container. Give me the contents of the one after that. Give me the contents of the one after that. If I could spell right. Okay? So this thing here, doing star x plus 3, is the same thing as saying x3. Okay? You're used to typing it like this. You're used to writing it with a bracket. Another way, this is actually the purest, the purest computer science C++ way, is to say, take X, go three places, you know, go three more cubby holes farther down, and use the star to say, give me the contents that's inside of there. Okay? Now, for the most part, you don't need to worry about all of these intricacies, but that's one of the things that makes C++ 
ridiculously powerful is that you can mess with all of these pointer things. You can imagine there's a whole plethora of things that you can do when you can talk about addresses and all these pointer things. Okay, It makes C++ very powerful, but it makes it very confusing. And that's why when they created Java, they wanted to find the balance of those two things. It, Java uses pointers and has many of the same powerful things that C++ has, but you don't explicitly ever deal with the pointers like you do sometimes in C++. That's what makes Java nicer. It's, it's more user programmer friendly in that you don't have to worry about the pointers, but you can get some of the power out of them. Okay? So, understanding that, that when we do this X, a bracket length end bracket that creates x as a pointer and allocates length number of bins to store the array in okay so what we can do now is we can declare x not like this but that's x being a, a scalar and storing a value 5 in it we're going to have x be not the contents of a memory place, but the address to the memory place, by putting a star there, that's saying, I want X to store not a value that's inside the mailbox, but the address of the mailbox itself. Okay? Then what you can do is you can say, I want X to equal a new double of length. And I just need to double check that I got the syntax right. Indeed. Okay. So what this is what this line does now is it says, okay, I've got this pointer X, because that's the basis of an array, is I need to know where's the beginning place of it. Okay? And when I say new double of length, that says, okay, I got this pointer X. I want now you as a compiler to go and find me a block of memory of length size and set X to point to the beginning, to first place there. Okay, which is really, I mean, that does essentially the same thing as double, you know, these, these two lines, these two lines do the same thing as double x length. Whether I do this line, this one here, if I, and I can, I can spell right, okay, if I do that, I get that, okay, or if I do this, I get the same thing. So those two lines give me the same thing. Whichever one of those, you know, these two lines are equivalent. Okay? Now, why on earth would I ever write it like this? That's way more complicated, right? Okay? And the reason that I would want to do that is I can now have length not be a constant. I can run that and it'll work. I can't run this. That will not work because length is not a constant. Okay, now that's more apparent if we use cn for length. Okay, it's more apparent if I do this, because that will still not work. Okay, but it should here. It waits for me to type, I want six of them. There's my, there's my first six squares. See that? I used C in to get what length was, and I used this one, this command here, rather than the other one. It would not work with the other one. If I uncommented that and tried to run it, it would not work because I need to have a dynamically allocated array. Okay? Let me get rid of all these just so I don't have all this mess in here. All right. Now, when 
I create a dynamic array, okay, like this, I could later, I could later say, after I've done that, I could now say, um, I want X now to equal a new double, and I want it to be a different size. I want it now to be 10 instead of however many length was. That'll work. And then I could say, you know, I could do whatever. You know, that, that will work. Okay? I mean, it doesn't actually do anything after I put in my six. It doesn't actually do anything. Okay? But that'll work. And now X is an array of 10 instead of an array of, 20, of 50. Okay? You can't do that with a statically defined array. You're, you're going to set, if you do double X length, you can't later say, you know, make X a different size. You can't do that with a statically de, de, um, allocated array. Okay. Now, there's one problem with this command, with this here. Okay. <laughs> this memory, when I do the 50 memory, and then I go and create the 10 memory, the 50 memory stays there. And that memory is used, is marked as used by the computer. Okay? And I will never be able to reuse that memory until I shut down my computer and reboot. Okay? Now, I've got, I don't know, four gigabytes of RAM in here. So if I've used up 50 memory places for some numbers, I'm never going to notice that. Okay? And even if I ran this program a hundred times, I'm not going to notice any difference in my, my computer. Okay? So it can be very dangerous to have this. It's what's called a memory leak. Imagine I did this, but I put it in an infinite loop. And I accidentally had an infinite loop, and I kept looping, and I kept adding, you know, allocating 50, allocating another 50 more. Eventually, my computer would run out of memory, and it would just go to a standstill, and it would crash and do some horrible things, and I have to reboot. Okay? So what we need to do is we need to delete that memory, release it back to the wild, so to speak. Okay? And Java will do that automatically for you. C++ will not. Okay? So before I create a new X and reallocate it, I need to delete X. I can't remember. Does it come before or after? Come after, I think. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. I can't remember whether it comes. Well, it probably gives a syntax error one way and not the other. Error. Yes. Because they need to be before. Right? It doesn't look right to me. But it is. Okay. Does that work if there's something in there? Yes. Um, what it, it doesn't actually delete the values that are there. It, it severs the connection between the name. It, 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 it evicts X out of those memory locations. Yes, it will still run and it won't cause any crash because when when you do that delete command, what it does is say, okay, you know, let me do this. The, the numbers were in there, that's 0, 1, 4, 9, 25, etc., right? Okay, so let's say I do that and then I do delete. The only thing that it does is this. It's this. Even something like this, if you say, uh, you know, double Y, okay? And I forgot to spell. Okay? When I do that, 
What it does is say, okay, I'm going to find some memory location somewhere that's not being used, and I'm going to put Y next to it, okay? And whatever was in there is still there, and there's actually always something in every memory location. So if I do something like this, let me put a pause here and do F5, okay? And I say, what's Y? You know, that's the number that's in my, Y's mailbox is already full with the number negative 9.2 to the 61st. So there's something already there, okay? I mean, the short answer to your question is yes, it'll work, but this is the, you know, just showing that when you delete stuff, it doesn't actually delete the data that's there. It just severs the connection of the name to the address, okay? Right, yes, let's do that. What would happen if we deleted that? And then let's do this. Let's do C out X zero. And let's do this too. Let's do here C out. This is X. X, which is going to be an address now. And let's do C out. This is what is in X. X zero. And then let's do the same thing. Oh, I didn't put a value, did I? Let's do that. And so we'll do the same thing after we've given them values, and then let's do the same thing after it's been deleted. Okay? Where's, where's that? All right. We'll run it. Let's get six values. Boom. So that's the address of X. That's There's junk originally in it. I set all the values. The address is still the same. The value in X0 is zero. It's no longer junk, okay? Then when I delete it, okay, isn't that interesting? It still is X. That's really curious. But then the value's different. <laughs> interesting. That's not what I expected. I, ex I, I don't know. And that would, you know, that would seem to contradict what I said that it doesn't change the value. Um, you got something else running? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't explain that. I'm not sure, Andrew. That's really curious. You get the same address value? Junk value. Huh. I'm I'm sure I'm sure there's an explanation. And I'm I'm still pretty certain, Andrew, that these values are still actually all there. I don't think it changed them. I think there's something else going on. <laughs> Maybe, but I think that's unlikely. But I don't know. I'm not sure. But that, that's real interesting. But I, I'm not certain. Um, let me, I do want to show one more thing. Oh, gosh, we didn't even get the second two-dimensional arrays. That's really tricky. Um, we'll have to squeeze that in somewhere. Um, I do want to show you one thing about the syntax on the delete, okay? This delete, what this delete does, the, the, the brackets there say, okay, look at X, delete not only the memory position of X, this is now, this is X zero, not only delete X itself, because I mean, X is really equal to that memory location, okay? So if I do delete X, what that'll do is it'll just sever, it'll just 
disconnect X being associated with this memory location, okay? By putting in the brackets, it will disassociate with all of the six or all the 50 or all of the array. It says, you know, X is not only pointing just a single double, but it's an array. You get rid of all the things that it's all the arrays, the, all the array values that it's associated with, okay? And to see the difference between whether you put the bracket or whether you don't, Okay, instead of having this double y is equal to 5, let's do this. We'll say double star. So y is now a pointer to a, uh, a double. And let's say I want to set the value that y is pointing to to 5. Okay, this statement is the same as if I just did double y equals 5. Okay, so this is how you would normally do it. This is the crazy roundabout way to do it, okay? Or we could do, actually, we could do this too. We could say uh, y is equal to a new double. Right, and that'll make it a single value. So these, these two things are also equivalent. If we then said y of, well, we could do, yeah, y is equal to, I don't know, which way do you prefer? We could do it like this, y0 is equal to 5. That kind of implies that it's an array. That way should work too. And then we could do a c out. Well, that one, we can do here c out y. If we run that, Oh boy, wasn't that fun? What I do wrong? Yep. Boy, all those errors just for that one thing. Don't you love it? Oh, that's right. That that's the that's the I I asked to do a C out of Y. That's the address that Y is pointing to. Okay, as opposed to what is the value that's stored in there? The value that's stored in there is 5. Okay. Now, if you know, in this way, I've lost that memory location. I can never get that back when I run it again. Okay. And what I would need to do is I would need to do delete y. Okay, because y in this case is just a single scalar value. So when I delete y, it gets rid of the it, it, you know, releases the memory that Y is pointing to, releases that back to be used again, okay? Which is contrasted with X. If I only did this, it would only release the first memory location and the rest of the others would not be released back. Putting the brackets on it will release all the memory back, all of the ones in all the array that X is, is, is associated with, okay? Is there any I don't believe so. I'm pretty sure it will work fine and it wouldn't make any difference because technically it's an array of one value. So I don't think it makes any difference. Certainly you want the brackets on the X. And um, we didn't get a chance to do uh, matrices, two-dimensional array, because that gets even weirder when you do it dynamically. So maybe we'll pick up that next time or some other time. Yeah. All right. If it uses that memory location for it might, it might. All right.